Amen. So we're going to continue the series on Christmas. And Jesus is the reason for the? And it's not only this season, it's what? Every season, right? Every season is the reason. Amen. <clears throat> I want to begin by uh, just reminding you of one of the greatest accomplishment, accosh, accomplishments. Tongue tied there, Kilia. <laughs> For mankind within our generation, or most of us, was the Apollo 11 landing on the moon. How many of you were alive when the Apollo went to the moon? I can show your age. <laughs> Not too much. <laughs> Not too many people. Right, 1969. So 1969, the lunar module landed on the moon. And it was an amazing feat for man. All right? I remember sitting close to the television and watching this event moment by moment as the lunar module, they called it. I actually built a model of that because I was so into it when I was a kid. I had the whole rocket ship and everything. And I remember sitting next to the TV and watching this lunar module land and um, <clears throat> watching Buzz Lightyear stand on the moon. <laughs> oh, the other guys remember. They know Buzz Lightyear. <laughs> okay. Greatest event. Amazing. But what eclipses that is the greatest event for all mankind was the birth God made flesh coming from heaven to this very planet. Isn't that amazing? That is the most greatest event for all mankind. God in the flesh, John chapter 1, coming down from heaven to earth. The Bible says, they call him Emmanuel, God with us. Look at your neighbor and say, God is with us. So let's read the scripture, our scripture we've been reading all month. Can you read the scripture with me? Colossians 1, 15 to 17. Ready? One, two, three, go. The Son is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation, for in him all things were created, things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or powers or rulers or authorities, all things have been created through him and for him. He is before all things, and in him all things hold together. Jesus holds all things together. Jesus is holding you together. Jesus has got you, yeah, your situations, your circumstances, he's holding you together. Amen? And out of this greatest thing, event, not thing, but event, out of all history, it was centered around two people. A young woman named Mary and a young man named Joseph. As great as that event was, back in that time, and it was a scandalous thing that had happened. Mary was engaged to Joseph, and she was found to be pregnant. Now, at that time, that was very scandalous, okay? That was, that was like, wow, according to the law. But it's also a story of trust. It's also a story of faith. It's also a story of a mission that is given by God. So let's look at Mary. The backdrop of this is the Bible says that God sends the angel Gabriel to Nazareth to see Mary. And this is what happens in verse 28. And it says here, and having come in, the angel said to her, rejoice, highly favored one. The Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. 
But when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying and considered that manner of greeting this was. Then the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bring forth a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. He will be great, and he will be called the Son of the Highest, and the Lord God will give him the throne of his father David. And he will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Then Mary said to the angel, How can this be? Since I do not know a man. She's never been with a man. Then the angel answered and said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the highest will overshadow you. Therefore, also the Holy One who is to be born will be called the Son of God. And he explains, Now indeed, Elizabeth, your relative, has also conceived a son in her old age. And this is, but she knew a man, her husband. Okay, why don't you get that? And this is now the sixth month of her who was called barren. For with God, nothing is, will be impossible. Check this out. What does she say in verse 38? I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May your word to me be fulfilled. So we're going to talk about lessons that we can learn through the Christmas this event, this amazing event. What can we learn? Well, out of this, we can pull out number one is God's ways are divine and not always conventional. Okay? We have a divine God. Okay? I want you to check this out. God is divine. Right? He's not conventional. Our thinking and even the thinking of that day, they were waiting for the Messiah. They were waiting for the promised one. And for them, they wanted something to be huge and big. They wanted a king. They wanted a savior, a Messiah to help them. But God is not conventional. He's divine. And what does he do? Right? In the manner we would imagine, we would get married, would have a child, and that would be the chosen child. Right? But no. God is divine. He says, no, you're going to have a child this way. By the power of the Holy Spirit, you will conceive in yourself Jesus. I want you to think about that also. Well, let me just go back. Before I go there, let's read this uh, scripture together. Isaiah 55, 8 and 9. Ready? One, two, three, go. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways. God declares, declares the Lord. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. The way we think, the way we process is not the same. God has a divine way of looking at things. Amen. And if we can tap into the divine things, okay, you will see again the purpose. You will see again beyond what you can see right now. Amen? As did Mary. Amen? Think about it. She conceived Jesus by the power of the Holy Spirit, not with another man. Think about what Jesus said. Where is he going to be? Where's the Holy Spirit going to be? Where? In you. What do you have to do? You get born again what? In you. Right? There's a conception. There is something that happens in you. It's not conventional. Jesus said this, John 14, 19. A little while longer and the world will see me no more. He's talking about he's going to die on the cross. He's going to ascend into heaven. You will see me no more. At that day you will know that I am in my Father and you in me and I in you. Amen? It's so outside of the thinking. He's saying I am going to be in you. He's divine. Jesus can live in you. Amen? Amen? The Holy Spirit and all his qualities and character can dwell in here. Amen? In us. God operates in his divine nature. That's why when you pray, how many of you prayed? How many of you prayed in the last few weeks and God answered divinely? I want to see a show of hands. One, two, three, go. I want you guys to look around. Keep your hands up. Keep your hands up. If you prayed this weekend, God answered 
divinely and really quickly. Oh, look, at, look at that. We have a divine God. And in fact, I could go around right now and ask you what that was. So, Ka'ohu, what was that? Um, on Tuesday, we had home group, and we like were going around for prayer requests, and I asked if they could pray for me that, I don't know, a new job comes up, and Uncle Lance kept pushing to get specific with what kind of job and what kind of field and what kind of pay, and I just mentioned, like, you know, 11 at the minimum, you know, and a couple of days later, my boss told me that I got an $11 raise, so... I'm staying there, <laughs> and praise God. Super grateful. Amen? We have a divine God. He moves divinely. It's not conventional. What we would think, we would think, and the process is, well, go find another job that pays $11. Correct? I mean, that's good to do. We have to ask, seek, and knock. I'm not going to discredit that. I don't want to discredit the things that we have to do on our own. Amen? Okay, but what, I, what I'm just trying to say that we have a divine God. He doesn't operate conventionally. He's divine, and that's what he did for Jesus. That's what he did for Mary. He said, look, I'm going to send my son. The prophet's been talking about it for hundreds of years. And it was even a fulfilled scripture of prophecy. All right, in Isaiah chapter 7, all right? So God is not <clears throat> conventional. He's divine. How many of you need his divine move in your life? As Mary did, trust him. Number two thing we can learn out of this event and this story with Mary is that those who trust in God will not have to be afraid. I was just amazed when you'd look at that scripture, she only asked one question. How can this be? Right? How can this be? God is saying, look, you're going to have a child. And she says, how can this be? How can this be? Right? Then she says, I'm the servant of the Lord. Have your will. Wow. What faith, what trust in God. Amen? I wish I had trust like that. That's such, to me, it's like a childlike faith. Amen? A childlike faith. Uh, yesterday, um, they're painting our home, thanks to Baker's painting. <laughs> yeah, but um, all week, we've been having this little four-year-old in our home. And I got the blessing, because I was off yesterday, and I got to spend the whole day with this little four-year-old, and his name is Sonny Boy, and I hope he comes next week. But little Sonny Boy, he has such, you know that childlike faith, right? Anything I said to him, anything I would say, he would believe, right? You know, I've said, let's imagine we're doing this. You know, we're in the mountains. He'd be like, yeah, what are you, yeah, right? Okay? You know, anything is just that childlike faith. And I just believe Mary just had this faith. It's like, how can this be? I'm your servant, Lord. Your will be done. And that's something that we can hang on to. That's something that I believe the church and we all can hold on to. When God says, look, this is possible. This is possible for you. Just have that faith and that trust. Because when you trust in him, you'll be okay. Look at your neighbor and say, when you trust in him, you'll be okay. All right. <laughs> Woo. Some of you had to do some major trust. Here we go. Psalm 910 says, those who know your name trust in you. For you, Lord, have never forsaken those who seek you. Amen. All right. So that's Mary. Total trust, faith, don't have to worry. Now here's Joseph, the story of Joseph. This is how the birth of Jesus, the Messiah, came about. I love going through this every year. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph, but before they came together, she was found to be pregnant through the Holy Spirit. 
Verse 19, because Joseph, her husband, was faithful to the law and yet did not want to expose her to public disgrace. He had in mind to divorce her quietly. So again, the law states at that time, if she committed adultery, I mean, she literally could be stoned to death. Okay? But obviously, he was a man of faith. He was a man of the word. Other translation says he's a just man. But something in him had a lot of mercy and grace. Amen? Right? And he decided to divorce her quietly. Verse 20. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet, this is Isaiah, the virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him and took Mary home as his wife. Wow, stop. What faith. How many of you guys... If an angel of the Lord, and you were in that struggle, having some type of a relational problem, or you're, you're soon to be, all of a sudden, his hapai, and it's not you, would actually hang around in the, this day. Seriously. And even back in that day, was even worse. All right? He was already faithful. I believe Joseph already knew and understood the scriptures. And he understood he had no question. He was faithful to God. So here's some lessons that we can pull from this. Number one, God will use your faithfulness to complete his plan. Whatever faith that you have, God is going to use. All right, I'm going to say that again. Whatever faith that you have, even if you feel like you have little faith or you're just starting to believe, God will use your faith. And that faith trans transitions into faithfulness, being faithful to God, being faithful to whatever he, de he desires for you. Amen? Amen? All right? Joseph had a plan. Didn't he have a plan? He was going to marry her. According to the law, when you're engaged, it's kind of like you're married and he would be building his wedding chamber during that time. He would be building something and working hard at it so when his bride comes and they get married, they can consummate their marriage in the wedding chamber. All right? Okay? So, again, his plans got messed up. <laughs> right? He's going to get married and now, whoa, my fiance is pregnant. God will use whatever faithfulness that you have to fulfill his purpose. Amen? How many of you have plans? All right. How many times have your plans changed? <laughs> My house was painted all week. I'm going to share that. My house was painted all week. And I can't believe I'm poor guys, man, painting my house. Because plans was changing over and over and over and over. Right? Unexpected things over and over and over. And you know what? They were faithful. Right? It's kind of like, man, plans come up. They change. It's the same thing with the Lord. You have plans. You put them before the Lord. Right? But he will bless you in your faithfulness. Here it is. A man's heart plans his way. But the Lord directs his steps. All right? You have plans. I have plans, but they don't always go the way I want it. Not every step. Read with me Proverbs 19, 21. Ready? One, two, three, go. Many are the plans in a person's heart, but it is the Lord's pur purpose that prevails. Amen? It's his purpose. He prevails. And if you can get let go of that and trust in the Lord in that, you, you, you'll find that you will be blessed immeasurably. Amen? Because you, you, you're just walking with him. 
And that's what Joseph was doing. He said, look, okay, Lord, I'm going to do what you said. I have a mission here. I have a mission. Amen. Next we learn Joseph just got up, right? He was sleeping. He had a dream. And what did he do? He got up and he did what the Lord said to do, right? So therefore, what we can get out of this is that, number two, wake up. Write that down. Look at your neighbor and say, wake up. Look at somebody else and say, wake up. Are you sleeping? Are you sleeping? <laughs> wake up and do what God wants you to do. And you know, God was speaking to me in this, on this level. Sometimes I'm just in this dream state. I'm just dreaming about things. You know, you ever daydream? You dream about this, you dream about that, I want to do this, I want to do that, and dream. And sooner or later, God's going to like, okay, wake up. Wake up. Start doing it. Amen? Are you with me on that? Are you with me on that? A lot of times, we just dream. He's speaking in the dream. He's showing in the dream. He's showing in the vision. Amen? He see it. You see it happening. You see the good things. I see amazing things for this church. I see amazing things for his people. Amen? But I can't just sit back and dream. We can't sit back and dream. All right? Dream big, but we got to wake up and do what he said. We got to implement. We have to implement and do things. Amen? Mind you, I'm preaching to myself. Okay? Can we do this together? Yes. Amen? Yes. We're going to do this together. 2016. We're going to dream big and we're going to move forward. All right? Okay. <clears throat> so we can learn that about Joseph. He got up. He took Mary as his wife. This is mine. Right? He took her and he took on the mission. Say, take on the mission. I want you to write on the side of that, that wake up. Put, take on the mission. Take on the mission. What is your mission? What is God, does God want you to accomplish? What have you been dreaming about? And is he saying, I want you to do this? What are you going to do to do it, to accomplish it? Amen? Where's Tammy? There's Tammy. Hi, Tammy. You wouldn't believe how many God ideas I have at work. Huh, Tammy? And I keep telling her my God ideas. I think I told her two so far in two weeks. But if I told her all the God ideas I had, it'd be like crazy. But I told her two in two weeks. And, and here's the thing. I know they're God ideas. Just that I never, I never go forward in it. How about you? How about you? You have a God idea and God wants you to accomplish something. And you never take the step. Amen? All right? We can do this. Wake up and do what God wants you to do. Lastly, what can we pull out of this whole story? And the most important thing out of all of this in this season, Jesus came to save. Jesus came to save you. Jesus came to save the world, save us, that we could have eternity. I want to go a step further because with Jesus Christ in your life, Jesus can save your marriage. Let me say that again. With Jesus in your life, Jesus can save relationships. With Jesus in your life, Jesus right, can prosper you in all facets of your life. Amen? Jesus came to save. Jesus said these words, if anyone hears my words but does not keep them, I do not judge that person. For I did not come to judge the world, but to what? Save the world. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for blessing us. Let us pray and call up the worship team.
I want you to just do an inventory of your heart this morning. We've been going through a lot of inventories of our heart during our <clears throat> leadership class. Are you hurting? Are you exhausted? <laughs> Are you tense? Are you stressed out? Do you have resentment in your heart? Jesus came to save. Jesus came from heaven to earth that you could have an abundant life. Every eye closed, every head bowed. Let's just come before the Lord right now. during this Christmas season let Jesus come into your heart and come into your life let the Lord move in you we have a divine God and this morning it's a part of your confession are you struggling with things that you're in bondage to Jesus can set you free and if that's you this morning, making that confession is a step of faith. Every eye closed, every head bowed. And if that's you, I, I'm just sensing in my spirit, I just want to pray for you. If that's you this morning and you need the Lord in your life, and here's the gospel. The gospel says this. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that whoever would believe in him would not perish but have everlasting life. He came to save and he came to allow us to have eternity and abundance here on earth. If you need the Lord this morning and you need him so, on a count of three, I just want to pray with you. I want you just to look up at me and I want to pray with you. Ready? One, two, three. I see you. I see you. I see you. I see you, brother. I see you back there. I see you. I see you. I see you, my brother. I see you. I see you. Thank you. holding out. The Lord just telling me, just wait. Hold on. Hold on. Thank you, God. All of those of you who looked up at me, could you please come to the front? Not to embarrass you, but just to come up. I want to just pray with you. If you looked up at me, please come to the front. Don't be ashamed. Of, or if you, <clears throat> you can bring a, a family member or you can bring someone with you. Come, come, come. Masters, leaders. Come, my dear. All right. Thank you. God, we just pray right now for these precious vessels, Lord God. We just sense your 
how fragile, Lord, life is, Lord. We just sense, Lord God, how difficult it is sometimes, Lord God. But you are the Lord. You are divine. You are mighty, Lord. You are divine, Lord. And right now, Lord God, as we stand here, Lord, as a step of our faith, Lord God, we commit our lives to you, Lord. We commit the calling to you, Lord God. We commit the things that, Lord, that you are revealing to us even right now, Lord God, at this moment, Lord God. The things that we choose to hold on to, Lord God, we now let go, Lord. And now, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, Lord God, begin to just pour in, Lord God, a freshness, a newness, Lord God. Begin to deposit, Lord God, into your precious, precious vessels here, Lord God. Lord, all the doubts of their minds and all the doubt of the enemy we come against in the name of Jesus. You have no power and you have no right over these precious vessels today in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. You trust in the Lord, he says. Just, I'm just encouraging you. You trust in him. There is nothing in this world will hinder the call that you have. I really just sense right now you have a call in the name of Jesus. Oh, Lord, again, we commit to you, Lord. I pray, Lord God, in this season right now, Lord God, that you would rain down like never before. That, Lord God that you would bring clarity of mind, Lord God, that you would bring the divine God ideas, Lord God. You would bring the provision where there needs to be provision, Lord God. You would fill the gap, Lord, in the hearts of the hurt, Lord God, and the lost, Lord God. You would take away, in the name of Jesus, all the struggles and the habits and the hurts and the things, Lord God, that would hinder, in the name of Jesus. And Lord, we come together as a church. We come together as one, Lord we pray for even those that are in the seats right now, Lord God. We pray for them also, Lord God. Your blessings, Lord God. I'm believing for every single person in this church, Lord God, that this the end of this year will come through as a breakthrough, Lord. That coming into 2016, Lord God, Lord, every year, a new year, a new season, a new season, a new vision, Lord. A new vision, Lord God. A new hope in you, Lord God. We thank you, God. Begin to thank the Lord. We thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your grace. We honor you. We love you, Lord God. We look forward to the great things ahead. We speak life over these people. I speak life over this church. In the name of Jesus, we glorify you. We honor you. And all God's people said, amen and amen. Somebody praise the Lord. Come on, give somebody a hug. Give them a big hug.